The video is being sponsored by Educative, which has a collection of well-written courses for software developers. What I did from my side is to organize a free giveaway for my audience worth 149 US dollars. But more on that later, let's first learn a new algorithm today. Today we are going to solve a problem which is related to strings. It's been asked in Amazon coding interviews and we are going to learn a new algorithm known as sliding window. So let's start with the video. <music> All right, the problem talks about finding the longest substring in a given string, which has no duplicates at all. So in this case, if you will see, the R is actually duplicating, which means we cannot make such a substring. It's not valid. So BREX is now a valid substring, but again, we have to make the longest substring, remember? So we make sure to extend up to A, and now this is the longest substring, which has no duplicates. So the answer for this string will be five. And that's all we have to do, but in order and solution. Now, before we make some progress in this, and before I teach you the sliding window algorithm, I just want to give you a brief overview. What we will do is for every index, we will find the longest substring that has no duplicates. All right, so this is our string S, and let's say this is I and this is J. So for given I, we are going to find the longest J such that the substring is having no duplicates. All right. We will store the overall maxima across the longest substring over all indices. So for every index, first we find the longest substring. And then if we maintain the overall maxima across all indices, we'll get our answer. We'll also maintain a window starting from index i and it ends at index j. And for our current window, we will always maintain a count mapping, which tells us where, uh, for a given character, how many times does it occur in the window. So in this case, as you can see, the count values are one for only characters A, B, and R, and which is essentially representing the characters which we have in our window. So how is this useful to us? Let's see. Now the idea is for every I, we are going to find the longest substring, which has no duplicates, which means we will try to extend J towards the right hand side. Now, if you will try to do that, I will also show you how this window will change like this CNT array, the mapping of characters, how it will change, we'll also show that. Now, the only things that will move are i and j, so that's why I have drawn or highlighted below the mappings for that. Now, as I move to e, you can see that the count of e in my count array or mapping increases to one. And it's always telling me what are the characters which are present in my window and how many times do they occur. So it's still going well. And now for given i, I am having this corresponding position in which I can see that the length is five and still no character is occurring twice. But now things get interesting. Now if I try to increase j, you can see that the count becomes two for the character r. And remember, we have to find the substring which is having no duplicate, so this is not allowed. So now at this point of time, we actually cannot increase j further. So we go back. And this is the longest substring for our current index i. Now the only way to make progress is actually to move i in the right hand side. So we do that and as you can see, as I move towards the right hand side, I decremented the count of character at ith position. In this case, it was a, so now count of a becomes zero, highlighting that only characters which are present in our window are b, r, e, and x, because only those characters are having the count values as one. Now we have a new i value and we try to extend this further, but we again see that the count of r is becoming two. So now we again cannot go further. So j stays at the same place and this is the longest substring for given i. Again, we make i go forward towards the right hand side and we can see that um, r, e, and x are the characters present and notice that the current window is at its maximum length for current i. This is something which you are always ensuring, right? Like we always give priority to J in moving forward. Only when it is not possible, we make sure that we are uh, we are progressing I towards the right hand side. So this ensures that for every I, we are always maintaining our window at the maximum length. And, and hence we are always ensuring we are covering all maximum or longest substrings for all indexes. All right, so you can see that the count value of E is one count value of r is one, count value of x is one. Always, whatever our window is, the count values are representing how many times every character is happening. So now, uh, 
I have to move I in the forward direction because as we have seen R is giving us some problem. But now you can see that R is zero in our current window, which means that J can now again start moving in the right side. We do that up to Z because now we can't go any further because we have already established that X is already present in our window. The count is one already. So if you try moving J forward, it will break the constraint of duplicates. So again, you have no choice but to move I until you get rid of that X and this is how it looks like. And again, now you can move J in the forward direction. That's what we do. And what I want you to notice is that for every I, we found the max J such that the substring I to J has unique characters, right? That's something which we always ensured. And throughout the process, if we simply check the current window and check whether it's of maximum length or not, we can actually get the longest substring, which is the, which is exactly what we have to return. So this is what the complete algorithm looks like in a walkthrough. And I would really encourage you to not take this very lightly. I mean, the implementation of this might be tricky because this window I and J, how you have to move forward when you have to break the loop, it gets really tricky. It, it, it has corner cases and I want you to give it time. I'll give you a walkthrough right now, but I really want you to do this on your own. So the function is length of longest substring, which takes input as string and returns the longest substring, which has no duplicates. Now, as you can see, if the size is an zero, meaning the string input string is empty, you have to return zero because you cannot form any substring. But this is something which you should handle. And I'm not sure if you did it. If you did not, it might happen that your function crashes if uh, an empty string is given as input, which is a red flag when you're talking about interviews. So these are the kind of things which I really want you to be cognizant about while you're writing code. Now moving on, what I do is I store the size of string as in n and I'm having two pointers, i and j. It, they are basically variables, i and j as we have seen in the animations and I'm initializing them to zero. So I'm saying that my current window is at the first character, right? And I'm having this vector of count, which is of length 300. And I have done that just to save some lookup time. For example, if you are to, uh, if you are using a map, that's also valid, but if you are using map, you have still, you can still do hashing to get order one time, but a vector is super fast. So that's what I'm trying to use. Now, what I'm trying to do is the first character, I'm incrementing the count of that, okay? So you can see that count of S of zero, which is the first character, I'm incrementing the count. And I'm saying that before I start with my algorithm, my current window is at the first character, I and J are zero, which means my window currently has only the first character. And that's why I'm incrementing that count. Now, what I do is while the Jth pointer or the Jth position is not up to the end of array, I will do something, okay? And I'm trying to extend for every I, I'm trying to extend my J towards the right hand side. And that's why I'm giving priority to J first. What I'm doing is I'm asking my count array, hey, do you have the J plus one -th character in you? If it's not, then I'm incrementing J because I can extend the longest substring which I can build at my current index I. Once I do that, I make sure to update my count values correctly. So that's why count of S of J is one and I'm performing the maximization of my answer, checking that if the resultant substring that we have built or the window that we currently have, is it longer than the previous answer that we are storing. And in the case that the J plus one -th character already exists, this will evaluate to false and we will go over here where it means that now you have to start moving your eye towards the right hand side. But before you do that, you have to ensure that you reflect the count value correctly. So that's why I'm decrementing the ith character. I'm saying that, hey, count, please remove the ith character from you. Basically decrement that. And now I move forward in the right hand direction. So that's all is uh, that's all which is happening in this particular code. And as you can see, since we are maintaining the overall maxima throughout the process, we can simply return the answer when this while loop breaks. I hope this is pretty neat and clear and the complete uh, implementation can be found on my GitHub. Links are in the description, guys. I really encourage you to solve this problem on your own. The problem link can also be found in the description in case you want to write it yourself. All right, coming back to educative. I think the educative unlimited is a good feature, I would say, because it allows you to gain access to 140 plus courses on their platform. So you can basically pay once, I mean annually, or you can pay monthly, you can choose two plans. But once you do that, 
you do not have to buy individual courses you get access to whole courses that they have on the platform which is something which i really like now you can see that the pricing is already discounted for india you get 40 percent off which makes it i would say really cheap but there are there is an extra discount which i requested for my audience if you use the coupon rachit but make sure to use it soon enough because it's only valid for first 90 users now talking about the giveaway i would say that uh these are the steps that you can follow to win the free one year membership, which is worth 149 US dollars, close to 11,000 INR. Now, what you have to do is share any of the videos that you have liked on my channel on LinkedIn. Once you do that, make sure to include in the description on the LinkedIn post why that video was useful. Well, the idea is that the LinkedIn post with maximum likes will win the membership and you have to comment below on YouTube the link to your LinkedIn post. And the annual membership, as I've said, it gives you full access to unlimited courses. And if you want to participate, these are the steps. Again, I will have that in the description. And please read description before commenting anything else about this. All right, guys, I hope you liked the overall video. You learned a new algorithm. That's pretty much I had in my mind. And let me know in comments what you think about it or if you have any doubts. Now I'm going back to make more animated, simple and clean videos so that I can save your time while you learn and rock your next coding interview. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe so that you do not miss the new videos and hit the bell icon. Bye bye guys. Happy coding.